Yeah, I mean, that's natural every season, regardless of you know whether the club announced the review in December. You're always being reviewed. I, I do agree with them that you know the performances are the on-field results haven't have been disappointing. Um, not something we're looking to rectify between now and the end of the season in terms of the finances. You know, we're not immune to you know the difficulties of the pandemic, but um, we're still quite strong financially and and quite robust. I think you know, obviously, I think a lot of the fans were expecting this review was going to end on such a date, and there was going to be an announcement made in January. Obviously, that didn't happen. Um, you know, the review was going to be announced on the twenty fifth of January. Um, obviously, that didn't happen. Um, you know, the review was going to be announced on the twenty fifth of January. Um, obviously, that didn't happen. You know, the review was going to be announced on the twenty fifth of January. Um, obviously, that didn't happen. You know, I haven't experienced it before, so I can't tell you the answer to that. You know, if there's going to be definitive answers that the the supporters want or not. At the minute, I'm just, you know, carrying on from day to day, game to game. From your own point of view, are you secure in your your future at the club and, and what's happening going forward? Um, you're never secure in in your role as a manager anyway, especially when you've been through, you know, difficult times. But um, yeah, I'm quite comfortable with the way. And um, my position is at the minute, and um, until that changes, you know, give my best every day. Has it been a strange experience, Neil, as you mentioned, having that sort of review cloud hanging over you the last couple of months? Do you know what? I've not taken any notice of it really. The only time I think about it is when you guys bring it up. So it's not affected my work or my thought processes at all. You mentioned there that. Finances are pretty strong. I think there was a, was a six loss of six million pounds, but for you, is, and, and the and the club as a general, is, is there not a worry regarding that? No, you feel you're secure in that sense. Oh, we just sold a player for twelve million. Um, so, you know, the, the, this is a well-run club, um, and like I say, you know, every club in the UK and around the world has suffered during this pandemic. We're not immune to it, but um, I think we're you know still in a healthy position compared to a lot of other clubs. Just feels um obviously with winning games and playing well, there's you know a nice sort of confidence about them and um, you know belief in the way they're playing, and that just comes with you know winning. The atmosphere around the place is good, um you know training's bubbly and you know all the players are sort of playing for each other and it's quite a close knit group at the minute. I don't know, Brian. I don't know what the the finances are of other clubs. Um, you know, but I would say that you know, the, the, this club is always well run financially. It's quite prudent. Um, it's quite smart in you know acquiring players and then player seals. You know, every year we've more or less sold a player for a, a lot of money. And um, you know, going through the lockdown, it was a very difficult period financially for the club in terms of lost revenues. And obviously, with no sort of game day revenues coming in as well this season, you know we've had to, had to be prudent about things, and that that's no different to any other club really. But I think financially we're robust, we're strong, and um, hopefully you'll see that you know come to fruition in the future. How have the, the has the financial situation impacted on yourself in terms of you and you being able to do your job? Well, it hasn't really. You know, we've not really spent any money in the, you know, the January window. Um, you know, brought John Joe in, and obviously we've sold El Hamed and and Fringpong. You know, two players who you know made it clear that they wanted to go in Cham. You know, he wanted to go as well. So, you know, in terms of finances, you know, that's not been dictated to me. It's more or less a question of, you know, players were unhappy. Um, and they made that clear for a while, and you know we thought it best from a footballing point of view that we move the players on. And go back to well, tomorrow night's game. First of all, Aberdeen, you're taking on a team who have not scored in the last five games. The manager's under a little bit of pressure at the moment as well. Maybe some say a lot of pressure just now. Um, you have a little bit of sympathy with Derek and, and some of the 
criticism that's going his way? Well, again, you know, I don't sort of read too much into that. Um, I think Derek's an outstanding manager. Um, he's done something, you know, not many modern day managers do. He's had that longevity at, at one club. I think he's been very loyal to Aberdeen when he could have gone on to maybe bigger and better things at other clubs, but he's he's remained loyal and, and stayed. And um, I think that loyalty should be reciprocated at the minute. We all go through difficult periods this season. is not normal by any stretch of the imagination, as we've seen not just here in Scotland, but elsewhere. So I think if anyone deserves a, a bit of loyalty and patience, it's, it's Derek. As managers, do you speak about it between yourselves? at all about the pressures of, of running clubs like Celtic and Aberdeen? No, you give it, you give out support, you know, because uh, we're all in the same sort of boat at times and, um, you know, I've got, like I said, you know, I've, I've not hidden my admiration for the work that he's done in his managerial career. I think he's a, a very fine manager and, um, you know, I, I hope he stays there as long as he wants to. Far forward, would you argue with your plans for the summer in terms of ins and outs? Yeah, we're moving along with them quite nicely. Did you expect a big turnover? Was it three or four? Is it more than that? What's your uh, gut feeling on that? I'm not going to, you know, give away a club business at the minute. You know, that's for later on down the line. Um, but um, yeah, I would expect there'd be, you know, a few changes to the football and personnel. How difficult is it to scout these players at the minute? Is it any difference from previous seasons? Yeah, of course. I mean, you can't get to see live viewings. That's the, the difficulty that you have at the minute. And um, all you can do is watch the games on TV or, you know, on the computer. And that's not ideal. Neil, you, you talked about the club being in a, a robust financial position. When you look at players like Odson Edouard and, and Christopher Ayer, who've only got the, well, less than 18 months now, less than their deal does that mean that with the situation the club will have to sell them in the summer or is there scope for, for new deals for them well both you know you could look at both scenarios um, you know we have spoken to both their representatives about sitting down and you know discussing new contracts but that's not been forthcoming at the minute so um, we'll have to wait and see what the, the summer brings but what we do have is we have a team full of assets um, and like I say we just Sold one there for you know a huge amount of money. When when you talked about um, Jeremy and and Hatem, they were want they were want away players and, and that that's where they went out in the end. Will will that be the same in the summer if anyone does want to leave? They show that they might want to leave. Then they'll just they'll just be sold straight away. Not necessarily. You know, every sort of individual situation has to be taken on its own merits. So again, you know, yeah, I've touched on you know how unhappy. Hatem was with, you know, the living conditions away from his work and how difficult it was for him on a personal level. And you have to take in the health and well-being of individuals as well now, you know, more than ever. So, again, you just look at each individual case and, you know, we'll sort of come hopefully to the right decision going forward on each one. Just finally going back to, to Odson, how, how good is it to have him... He looks back to his best right now and he's top scorer in the league with 15 goals. How good is that? Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, he's a brilliant player. Um, you know, I think 15 goals, you know, you can get a lot more. You know, at the end of, you know, going into the lockdown, he had 27. Um, and that was his best return in the season and the season wasn't finished. So I think, and I'm hoping that there's a lot more to come from in terms of goals. What pleased me more about his performance on Sunday, particularly in the second half, was his all round play. It was absolutely superb. You know, the way he manipulated the ball under pressure. You know, his physical attributes were there, his speed was there, and he scored two magnificent goals. The second goal is a brilliant team goal, which has been sort of overlooked a little bit by a lot of people, but from a, a team point of view on a on an awful pitch it was an outstanding goal. Hi Neil. Hi Neil. Neil, um, with the likes of um of Odson, the way he's playing playing just now, if you are sort of forced to sell him for financial reasons come the end of the season how important is it that he's playing as he is right now so that you get top top dollar for him in the summer well regardless of whether he goes or not um, you know the club will look at all interest all sort of actual bids for him and, and make the best decision for the club 
You know, I don't. I'm not sure his, his current form has any bearing on how much he'll go for because he's a top class player, as everybody knows. But it's great for us that he is in great form, and um, you know, I don't want to talk about him leaving. I'd rather he'd much rather stay here for the foreseeable future. How big a part do you think he's played then in the, in the turnaround over the last few? Well, he's he's played his, his part. He's certainly contributed, but so have many others, you know. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the team as well as some of the individual performances as well. Can I ask you one, Neil, a little bit off topic, if you don't mind? Um, some really moving words last night from James McLean's wife, who says that he's had, you know, online hate pretty much on a daily basis for, for his, throughout his whole career, death threats, etc. For someone who's had that sort of situation yourself do you feel for him and do you have any words of comfort at all yeah i mean you know we're talking you know i've seen on, on sky news today you know the pressure that you know football in its own right is starting to put on these social media platforms it should have been done a long time ago keith and these social media platforms you know don't you know display any accountability or look after the people who are on the end of this constant abuse whether it be racial, whether it be sectarian, whether it be personal, whether it be social. It's a, a real, you know, poison in modern day society. It's more prevalent, you know, in football because it's so so much more public and out there. But it's it's disgusting, you know, and I'm sick of fed up of talking about it now because nothing gets done. You know, it's about time these people were named, shamed and um, you know, dealt with by the police or the courts because it's just totally unacceptable it, it, it's almost as if it's all right to do it now you know it's almost as if your own personal thoughts can be put out on a public platform maybe you've had a few drinks you don't mean it but it's out there and you've no regard for the recipient you know and i'm seeing it a lot in english football now it's just it, it's got to come to a head and i'm glad the associations i'm glad sky you know as a public platform or you know, making this really relevant now, and you know, it's it's been too long. You know, it's been going on for far too long. For someone like James, how difficult must it be for him, and having you been in this situation yourself, to go out and play football on a Saturday when you're when you're reading this stuff on a daily basis? Well, how how would you do your job, Keith, if people were threatening you and your family? You know, how, it, well, it would be so difficult for you. And then this kid has to go out and play professional football, albeit, yes, everyone will go, well, he's well paid for it. He's not well paid to take abuse from, you know, all and sundry about his, his background, his religion or his family. And, you know, you, I'm in a, you know, a, a press conference here. You put yourself in his shoes, people threatening to burn his, his house, threatening his family constantly on a daily basis. You'll be looking over your shoulder every five minutes. You know, and I've been through it myself and it's a lonely place. And I hope he gets the right support. You know, it's all right, you know, people putting out statements saying we're going to support him. Do it. Show it. Associations, clubs, show it. It's not just James. It's all these kids who are getting racially abused in England as well. You know, the young lad down at Swansea. It's just absolutely scandalous now. Thanks, Neil. Well, yeah.